Okay, calling the July 21st, 2021 Special Independent Redistricting Commission meeting to order. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, I'll join, of the United States of America, of America and the Republic of America. Thank you, and I will perform the roll call. Honorable Elizabeth Allen White. Present. Honorable Abraham Khan. Present. Honorable Melinda A. Johnson. Present. Great, thank you. And um, this is the time where we ask for public comment, but we do not have anyone attending the meeting virtually. We'll move to um, the item on the agenda, introduction of city staff assisting with redistricting process, and I'll hand it off to Michelle. Thank you. Honorable Commissioners, we wanted to take some time to introduce you to one of our project leads for this redistricting process. Unfortunately, many of the city staff members who have joined this process were not able to attend. However, we do want to let you know that we have such a great group. They're all very excited to be a part of this. And I definitely wanted to take the time to introduce you to Sarah Iza. She has a great reputation here at the city and she will be one of the co-leads for this project. Thank you, good evening. Um, I'm glad to be a part of this project. I'm here to help in any way possible. And please ask me if you have any questions, thank you. Can I ask one question? Can you describe what your role is? I'm assisting um, with the, the outreach, scheduling the meetings, um, it is as much help as I can be to um, the city attorney's office as possible. Thank you. Okay, I think that now we can move on to the second item on the agenda in which uh, we wanted to discuss the alternative writ and I'll go ahead and let Marguerite and David take the lead next. Uh, yes, David, you want to uh, lead off uh, and uh, the purpose of this is really to get feedback back from the uh, commissioners, uh, but we'll give a little outline of uh, the uh, the action as we envision it and very much look forward to your feedback. Uh, David? Yes, thank you, Marguerite. Um, honorable commissioners, city staff, um, wanted to quickly brief you on documents that um, I think you've had the chance to receive over the last couple of days. Um, as we've talked about in the past, um, what we have proposed and laid before you is a proposed draft petition for writ of mandate. Um, requesting that the court use its judicial power to reform uh, Section 1301 of the Santa Barbara City Charter. Um, as we've discussed in the past, through no fault of any party, um, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the delivery of Census Bureau statistics, which is a ne necessary precondition for the commission to begin the redistricting process, has been delayed um, several months. And that in turn has made it um, virtually impossible for the commission to comply with and satisfy section 1301 of the city charter, particularly in light of uh, numerous state mandates um, in terms of public outreach and participation um, that are imposed on the redistricting process through the State Fair Maps Act. Um, so I'm going to quickly tick through a couple of the arguments and elements um, that we have before you. And, and as Marguerite mentioned, mostly here to answer questions, receive uh, feedback and comments. Um, in addition to the, the issue of necessity, the petition that, that we are proposing to file is consistent with uh, numerous court actions um, that have reformed initiative um, measures um, where doing so would would only effectuate the intent of the voters, which is what we have here. Um, so the, the most recent example was the California Supreme Court 
in the legislature v. Padilla proceeding, um, reforming the deadline um, that exists for the Citizens um, Redistricting Commission. And that decision in turn was based on principles that were announced by the California Supreme Court in COP versus Fair Political Practices Commission. Um, that case um, assessed potential reformation of uh, numerous elements of the Political Reform Act. And the court announced in that decision that the guiding principle for courts is that they may reform a statute in a manner that closely effectuates policy judgments clearly articulated by the enacting body here, the people of um, the city of Santa Barbara, and two, the enacting body, again, the people, would have preferred such a reform version of the statute to invalidation of the statute. Um, that's quite clearly what we have here. Uh, the people of the city of Santa Barbara enacted Charter Section 1301 in light of the uh, Banales litigation and, and settlement. Um, and they uh, empowered an independent redistricting commission to take over uh, key elements um, of the redistricting process. Um, the alternatives to the commission proceeding under a reform deadline um, would clearly depart from the intent of the voters. Um, one option, the, other, the options that are available, the alternatives are costly, infeasible, and would defeat the purpose of the voters in enacting Charter Section 1301, either placing a, a measure on the ballot um, which would be costly and confusing to voters and might not even be enacted if presented to the voters, um, or to the city council on its own um, engaging in, in the redistricting um, actions, which would clearly you know, be inconsistent with the settlements in Banales and the charter section um, could potentially invite litigation. So the, the alternatives are, are costly and infeasible and um, similar to what the California Supreme Court did in the legislature v. Padilla case um, would be a modest um, reformation um, of, of a deadline um, given, given the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I'll also quickly note um, that the extension that's sought in the petition would not disrupt future elections. The city has a clear beneficial interest in the matter and there's no alternative adequate remedy at law. Um, at law. Um, and the delay that's being sought in the petition is commensurate with the deadline that um, has resulted from the Census Bureau failing to deliver the redistricting data consistent with federal law. So let me pause there um, and, and Marguerite, if I've missed anything in terms of just an overview of some of the elements and arguments that, that are advanced in, in the papers that we've presented to you. No, I think that's excellent. I just want to make uh, just one comment. We're looking for an extension from November 1 to April 1. April 1 gives the time, uh, gives time for the commission's final map to go to the city council and be adopted in the ordinance. That's a good 17 days there at the beginning of April. And that puts us right on target with the statutory deadline for other charter cities. So we're not looking for anything exceptional. Uh, November 1 made a lot of sense at the time the voters enacted it. It become infeasible uh, because of the census delay. So the date we're looking for is April 1, and that gives the city council time to do its duty. It has charter-based duties with regard to the commission plan, and that's why we selected that date. And as David pointed out, the extension is commensurate, commensurate roughly, a few days off here and there, with the census delay, but it puts us on the same calendar as other charter cities. David, go ahead. Sure. Uh, honorable commissioners, just a couple of other points to bring your attention to. Um, at the last meeting that where we joined you, there was some discussion of um, the procedural options that we have in front of us. Um, as we discussed then, um, there are two main procedural options proceeding through alternative writ and uh, by ex parte application or through a noticed hearing process. Um, as you see in the draft papers and as we previously discussed, the alternative writ option is uh, most appealing to us um, primarily um, predominantly 
because it is expeditious. Um, time is of the essence in receiving certainty and clarity in terms of what the deadline will be that guides the commission. Um, we also understand uh, and do not expect and anticipate opposition, which um, further underscores um, the option of proceeding through alternative writ. Um, and so some of the papers that um, that we have circulated um, explain and support that procedural footing, including um, the ex parte application and the declaration um, stating the notice that's provided ahead of the ex parte um, um, appearance, as well as the proposed alternative writ. So in addition to those documents, what we have circulated is a petition for writ of mandate, a supporting memorandum of points and authorities, a request for judicial notice with supporting uh, declaration and memorandum of points and authorities, um, I believe eight exhibits. We have a declaration from Ms. Sarah Gorman, the city clerk services manager in support of several of the factual assertions that are made in the petition for writ of mandate and supporting memorandum. Um, and uh, the notice of related cases in attachment and if I could take just one moment on that point, um, we believe that, again, uh, judicial economy and efficiency will be served if the proceeding that we're proposing to, to engage in is related to the Banales um, litigation, which was before Judge Geck. Um, that, court, that courtroom and, and Honorable Judge Geck is familiar with the facts and the issues that are, are at play in the relief that we're requesting in the background um, and the rationale and the reason why we're coming before the court to seek reformation of the deadline in Charter Section 1301. So we think um, there's a, a very strong argument for the relation of the cases and we think that that like proceeding through an alternative writ will allow us to move through the process hopefully as expeditiously as possible. Um, so with that, and unless Marguerite has anything else to add, I want to pause. We'd like to pause and uh, we look forward to the, the commissioner's um, perspective, comments and feedback. I know I have nothing to add. Uh, uh, just happy to field questions and comments and constructive suggestions for the briefing. But we can also do destructive ones too. <laughs> <laughs> We certainly want to know that. <laughs> we're, we're mediators. We only construct. <laughs> Let me start with Jed White. Anything uh, that you would like to ask? Yes. Yes. Um, I appreciated the notice of related case. I think the fact that it will go to Judge, or hopefully will go to Judge Geck, is a very, very good thing since she has the knowledge about the Benalla's case, and, and I think that that's the way to go. I was interested. I always look at what boxes are checked. And you ch you did not check the box which said same parties because it's not the same parties. So I, I thought that was great. You you checked the box that it was it was the same essential coming out of the same set of facts. And so I thought that was very very good. I think everything was done very well. I have one comment, and it really goes to the notion that judges being incredibly busy need to have things sort of pointed out in succinct form. And I wanted to go to page seven of the points and authorities um, in support of the um, alternative writ at uh, subsection C, which talks about the IRC not performing its duty to redistrict in four weeks. I think it would be really helpful to the judge to lay out, maybe even in bullet points, because there's various times, uh, time requirements that are mentioned. So you've got You've got um, five days to notice a public hearing, and you would have two public hearings. You have at least seven days um, to publish the final map. And I thought it would be great if we could just, for example, take the month of October and just show exactly, bullet point by bullet point, how you can't compress that into October 1 to November 1, and how putting the deadline in April allows us to go through all of those steps that are required and not miss a deadline or compress things in such a way where you're not giving adequate notice, which would be um, absolutely terrible. So that was my only suggestion. Other than that, I think it's brilliantly done. Uh, you have no opposition, so I don't think anybody's gonna be critiquing it. 
I'm just thinking about the judge who's, who really wants to understand how you've got that 30 day time frame and it really needs to be expanded to allow for the things that have to be done under the statutory requirements. Uh, Commissioner uh, um, White, I, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. That's the heart of the issue. And I like the idea of the schematic and, and we will incorporate that. That's just an excellent suggestion. Judge Khan. I thought it was all incredibly well done, well documented, well substantiated and, and explained. And, you know, of course, I would defer to my, my colleague, Judge White. She always has brilliant recommendations to make. I have nothing further to add. I, you know, I, I was also very impressed and I uh, found myself, of course, reading the materials as if I were a judge, which I thought was probably the best way to do it as the commissioner here, to see what questions I would have. And there was one thing that I kept getting hung up on where it's, the comment is made several times and it's been made today that this aligns us with the April 17th, 2021 deadline imposed from most other charter California cities. And I, I guess that that means that that gives us about six and a half months to, to get this in. But April 17th, 2021, I have to assume is a date this year that didn't really have any meaning for anybody for anything since no one had any census data. It's just a little confusing that that keeps getting referenced and I'm not, mm -hmm. I hope the comparison's made clear. Judge Johnson, we may have a typo in the brief. It should be April 17, 2022. Well, thank goodness, because that's what I thought all along, but it says 21 all the way along. Yeah. yeah. You know what? Yeah. I'm thinking, who's going to do anything on that date? If, uh, Judge Johnson, thank you for that comment. <laughs> we will word search this and make sure it's 2022. It's that is, there. Yeah. I, uh, apologies that you had to be stymied by that it is the type of typo that um a close read sometimes when you're too close to the papers you just read over it and we will word search it and correct that it's 20 to say that our last year's christmas letter misnamed one of our daughters-in-law after we read it 16 times a piece and clarified it, we got her first name wrong and they've been married 10 years. So it's not, you know, like it's a surprise. So you, your eyes see what it expects to see, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for the comment. Okay. All right. Yeah, and, and incidentally, uh, Marguerite, we had an ordinance last night that had at least eight sets of eyes on it and it did the exact same thing. It said, January 2, 2021. Oh. <laughs> we caught it though, uh, as the panel did. Thank you. Yeah, but David and I are trying to show off to the commission and we kind of stubbed our tongue there. So <laughs> you, you can never sink lower than I sunk last December, so don't worry about it. <laughs> you, you've met the standard of care. <laughs> Any other comments or questions uh, by the commission? Actually, the only other question I had was uh, anticipated filing date. When are you thinking that this will be happening? Well, with the permission of the city attorneys uh, and their final review, they're the lead attorneys on the case. We would we would hope next week. Oh, good. Uh, okay. Ariel, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, I'm I'm fine. I will want Tom Shapiro to be along. Uh, and you know, when we go into chambers and all that good stuff, but uh, yeah, next week would be wonderful. And okay. I do want to make sure that um, I, I'd like to give Judge Cho an opportunity to yes. appear as well. Yes, absolutely. I think that's wise. I think that's all. Wonderful work. Thank you. We are impressed. Welcome. So I think nothing else on our agenda for today, correct? Correct. And we're scheduled again for next next Wednesday, the yeah, 28th regularly scheduled meeting. 
Yeah. Right. And and my my uh, recollection as assisted uh, by Michelle's briefing this afternoon is that we want to have a, the draft of our civic engagement plan. It may be somewhat skeletal. As uh, Michelle announced, we've uh, reformed and added uh, a number of staff who are really doing work that our office can't do. So the outline may be somewhat skeletal, but uh, my recollection, and I would like to confirm with you, is that uh, don't miss the obvious, which is let's start getting some dates calendared because we're looking at a number of hearings. The other teaser for next week is I believe uh, Ms. Sosa Costa has uh, found that other cities are having as many hearings as they have districts. So we may oh. be looking at half a dozen rather than uh, four or so. Right, that's correct. What I've noticed is that a majority of cities will actually have one hearing per district. And when you think of uh, public outreach or participation, it makes sense. And I think that that would be advisable here. Are those cities of comparable size and geogra both geography wise and population wise? Well, they are larger cities, like for example, Los Angeles, but um, I could also check in and see if there are other smaller cities that maybe we could um, double check and see if they would uh, do a different type of uh, approach. Okay. It, I don't have any objection um, to some more dates that we have to make sure we can fit in. I, I would uh, surmise that it is an irresistible political proposition to do one in each district. Correct. So, uh, yeah. I, and that from my uh, administrative role standpoint, that means we need to find a way to afford it. So. Uh, okay. And presumably people could attend any such hearing, but it would be most convenient for each district. If I may, um, yes, I attended a, in a webinar yesterday um, in the city of Pasadena presented at their comparable size to Santa Barbara. Um, and I believe they did have um, one meeting per district. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. All right, any other business comments, questions? Thank you, we'll look forward to the skeleton plan next week because that's where we'll be able to really dive in so i'm excited about that all right is there a motion to adjourn so moved second second, second. unanimous and uh thank you very much this was interesting it's great uh, great to read things are moving forward very happy very happy so. thank you thank you great job we'll thank see you all. You next wednesday take Bye-bye. Have a good week. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye -bye. Goodbye. Bye.